Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you would like to participate in the processional for this morning, uh, you can come to the back with your palms. If not, that's fine. You can be seated right where you're at, um, and we will get started with worship here in a few minutes.
we rise, and you may uh, remain facing the front uh, in order to use the screens this morning for this portion of the worship service. The Lord be with you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Help us, Lord our God, so that it may be with joy that we begin our contemplation of the mighty things that you have done to give us eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, uh, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they had heard that he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Again, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and good and salutary. it is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Heavenly Father. Today we especially thank you for the love that you showed as your Son redeemed us. Step by step, our Savior followed your will, so that by his glorious death, he would redeem us and draw us to himself. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, those who greeted him cut palm branches to lay before him. We ask that you bless these palms and all who bear them this day. Grant that we may always hail him as our Lord and King. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today is the beginning of Holy Week. During it, we shall recall how our Savior gave his life so that our sins may all be forgiven and heaven opened to us. Even during worship, our minds wander to other concerns. These concerns are already known to God. Give them into his loving hands for resolution, but turn your hearts and minds to focus on our Lord's step-by-step determination to free us from every sin. Confident of the forgiveness that he won through his glorious death and resurrection, let us then admit our sinful condition to him and to one another. I confess to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in my thinking, speaking, and acting. I am mired in sin and incapable of saving myself. Heavenly Father, for Jesus' sake, and because of his sacrifice for us fallen creatures, we beg you to forgive, strengthen, and turn us to your will, so that we may follow our Savior in loving service to you and to one another. As a called and ordained servant of Christ who gave himself over to death that we might have eternal life, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. Our Old Testament reading comes from Zechariah 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. I will cut off the chariots for Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set you prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore you to double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from Philippians 2. Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who through, who though he was from the form of God, did not count equality, equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a servant, being born of a likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. (laughs) 
He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. For where I am, there will my, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him, so that the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe. For again, Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many, even of the authorities, believed in him. But for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Lord Together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and all of the children that are present with us, we invite forward, and bring with you your palm branch or your, your palm frond if you have one. Good morning. How are we doing? Excellent. What is today? What do we have? Palms. Why do we have palms? Because it's Palm Sunday. Yeah, we might think that it's a fan that we can fan each other, but no, that's not what it is. It's a palm because today is Palm Sunday. What happened on Palm Sunday? 
Why do we have these palms? Why are we shaking them around? And, and it kind of seems like we're celebrating. What are we, what are we doing today? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're celebrating Jesus going into Jerusalem and him kind of getting ready to die and to rise, okay? And when Jesus goes into Jerusalem, what happens? What do the people do? How does he go into the city? Does he just kind of go, did he call an Uber or um, how did Jesus get there? How did Jesus get into the city? Yes. Riding a donkey, yeah. Yeah. His disciples, he has them go and get a donkey, and they get on the donkey, and he rides the donkey into the city, and there's all of these people there, and all of these people are gathering together for a festival, and they see Jesus coming in on a donkey, and what do they start doing? Yeah, they they see Jesus coming and they start shouting Hosanna and they take palm branches that they cut and they start waving them and they lay them down along with their cloaks before Jesus um, as he walks into the city. And Marcus, that word that you that you said, Hosanna, can you guys all say Hosanna? Hosanna. All right. And they would shout this. They would shout Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Does anyone know what that word means? You know, you know. What's it mean? It means that you need a fan. Well, not exactly. It does not mean that you need a fan. What does Hosanna mean? What do you think? Hannah, do you know? What's it mean? What? It means save us. Why would the people be shouting, save us, to Jesus? Why would they be shouting, save us? What's Jesus going to do? What's he going to do? He's going to save the people from the bad guy. Yeah. And the bad guy is Satan, right? It's our sin. How's he going to do that, Marcus? He's going to die on the cross and take away our sins, right? Now, the people didn't really know exactly how Jesus was going to save them. They're just saying, Lord, we want you to save us, and we know that you can do it. But they didn't really know what that was going to mean. And just a couple days later, and in just a couple days for us, we're going to celebrate. And, yeah, we're going to celebrate Easter. But before Easter, we're going to celebrate Jesus. Yeah, Good Friday, dying on the cross. And by his glorious death, you and I are saved. And we're saved from the bad guys. We're saved from Satan. We're saved from ourselves and from our own sin, uh, from the things that that we do that are wrong. Uh, God comes and he saves us through Jesus, who forgives us and who loves us by dying. And then next Sunday, one week from today, we're going to celebrate the empty tomb. Because our Lord did not stay dead. Those shouts of Hosanna, he heard them and he answered them by dying and rising. And so you and I today, we get to celebrate. We are celebrating our Lord hearing our cries of Hosanna. Save us. And every day we die and we rise with him uh, as we remember our own baptisms. Okay? So let's go to God and let's thank him for, for giving us that gift of baptism and uh, for helping us live um, in Jesus. We pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for shouts of Hosanna, for we know, Lord, that we need to be saved from our sin. We thank you for sending Jesus, who entered into the city, uh, to go to his passion and death. Lord, help us be mindful of that this week. And may we move ever closer to celebrating the empty tomb next Sunday. Thank you for baptizing us into your family and for letting us know that we belong to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for coming up. You can head to the back for Sunday school this morning. We'll see you later. And we will continue our time of worship with our sermon hymn, A Lamb Goes Uncomplaining Forth, hymn 438.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, may they be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So it doesn't take very long after Jesus dismounts his donkey and the shouts of Hosanna, they stop echoing throughout the city of Jerusalem. And the Passover pilgrims, they scurry and disperse that a group of God-fearing Greeks, they show up eager for an audience with Jesus. In fact, they say to one of the disciples, Philip, hey, we wish to see Jesus. Now certainly, these weren't the only people in the city of Jerusalem that were seeking an audience with our Lord. The very man who just days earlier had raised Lazarus from the dead. Everyone was talking about the event. We can imagine for a moment that if social media was a thing during Jesus' time, he certainly would have been trending and viral. But Jesus had just entered into the city of Jerusalem amid the waves of palm branches and shouts of save us. He has passed the point of press conferences. He's not interested in interviews. He has shifted his entire focus to his impending death. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Jesus goes on to make it extremely clear in our passion reading for today that he is being glorified and lifted up in order that all people might be drawn unto him. Our Lord's ultimate glory is his crucifixion. And by his death, he draws us to himself. You know, if there were any questions lingering about what lie ahead for Jesus, our Lord clears things up pretty quickly, quickly with this metaphor. And I want you to hear it again. You've probably heard it numerous times uh, previously. But I want you to, to consider the words of Jesus and what he says. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus is that grain of wheat. He is that grain of wheat. Now try to keep it and to preserve it and you get nothing. Right? If you were to go to the store today and buy a package of seeds, and you opened them up and you held them in your hand day after day after day, week after week after week, what do you think would happen? Nothing. But bury it in the earth, and it rises up and bears fruit. Jesus goes the way of death and the grave like a seed that is cast into the ground. He loses his life only to then take it back up again three days later. And it's by his very dying and rising that he earns the gift of salvation for you and for me. This is what we expect to hear as we begin this holy week. Dying and rising. It's the very purpose of for why Jesus came. But then, then the unexpected. Jesus turns the Palm Sunday tables, if you will. If you thought that you and I could just simply glide through Holy Week as a spectator in the stands, simply soaking up the pomp and the passion and the pageantry then think again, brothers and sisters, because as it turns out, dying and rising is as much for you and for me as it is for our Savior Jesus. He says it, whoever loses his life, loses it, 
And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And then comes the phrase that pays. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. Jesus is referring to you, if you didn't pick up on that yet. He's referring to you and to me. We must follow him and know that it went for Jesus as it goes for us. If you follow, if you follow after the Christ, then expect to be treated as Jesus was treated, with trials and temptations and turmoil, and yes, even eventually death and rising. Follow Jesus, and that is what you get. Now, if we're honest, we don't care so much for that kind of talk. Dying and rising and turmoil and temptation and, and all the other negative things. But Jesus is no false advertiser. He never once said that following him would be easy. In fact, that's a myth that has been perpetrated by the world around us today. And many people... Many Christians subscribe to such myth. Many preachers that are on TV perpetrate such myth. And too many of them proclaim that following Jesus means nothing but the best here and now. In fact, you might even hear people say things like, follow Jesus and watch all of the pressures and the disappointments of life just melt away. Gag me with a ladle. <laughs> or they might say, follow Jesus, and your depression and your sickness and your struggling will forever be gone. Your bank account loaded with money. All of your troubles will go away. But the reality is, is that Jesus says none of these things, brothers and sisters. Instead, he says, follow me, give up control, Follow me to the cross, to the grave. Follow me, fall into the earth like a seed, like a grain of wheat, and die. That's what Jesus tells us today. And of course, we know that we all die. So what is Jesus really getting at here? We're all going to experience death. Well, throughout the New Testament, baptism is described in various places as being a type of death. Because in baptism, as Paul says, we are buried with Jesus. In baptism, we die, and our life is now in Christ. We rise with him. And so that dying and that rising in baptism, it's not just a one-time event, right? You might know what day it happened for you. For me, it was June 12, 1988. You should know that. If you don't know it, find it out. You've heard me preach that before. But on that day, you die and you rise, but it doesn't just happen on that day. It is a daily occurrence. It is something that takes place every single day that you must put off the old sinful self and put on or clothe yourself in Christ. Paul says it to the letter, uh, in, or to his first letter to the church in Corinth, when he says, I die every day. Every day you should die to sin. Every day, our old sinful self, with all of its sin, with all of its filth, with all of its wretchedness, must be drowned and die in those baptismal waters. And so I want you to ask yourself this morning, what needs to die in you? What do you need to drown? What areas of the old Adam reign supreme in your life? What needs to be put to death? There's a very selfish way that we could think about this Holy Week. And it goes like this. Jesus died and he rose for me so that I don't have to change a thing. I can live comfortably without needing to do any hard work of changing my life, especially my sinful life. That's a sinful way to look at this week. That's a wrong way. That's an easy way to look at this week. 
The truth is the exact opposite is true of Holy Week. Instead, we should say Jesus died and rose for you so that you might have everything to change you, to transform you into a new creation so that you can daily battle against that which prevents you from following Jesus, sin, death, and the power of the devil. Holy Week isn't, brothers and sisters, about being complacent. It's not about sitting on the sidelines and simply watching Jesus agonize in prayer or be arrested or undergo a trial and scourging in eventual crucifixion and death as if we are some detached spectator watching through a television screen at something horrific that is happening. Holy Week is about the urgency of putting to death every part of you that loves life more than it loves Jesus and the eternal life that he brings. And so I ask again, what in you needs to die and be buried? Perhaps it's your need to always be in control, or maybe it's your indifferences or your laziness. It might be that you seek identity in the opinions of other people because you seem to value them more than you value God who calls you child of God. Or maybe you define yourself by the defeats in your life and you embrace a life of being a victim. What part of you needs to be put to death? What addictions do you have? Do you feed them or do you starve them? Do you lack generosity? Are you always angry? Is there hatred in your heart? Whatever it is, it is a sign of how much your love for this world is over your love for God. And brothers and sisters, we all, every single one of us, struggle with this very issue. And so whatever, in, whatever sin has enslaved you, put it to death and bury it with Jesus. No doubt, the work of repentance is hard work. There's an old adage. You have all heard it, no doubt. No guts, no glory. No guts, no glory. And the truth is, we are often lacking the guts, but always wanting the glory. And yet we have a Savior who is all guts and who is all glory, and for all of the sin that you and I need to put to death, he takes it upon himself, and he dies in our place, and it was his moment of glory. Death and glory kind of seem to be a strange thing. If you go back to like Roman times, death and glory were, were much uh, connected, but for us today, death, glory, not so much. We don't usually connect such things. They are a weird combination for us because we put glory with things like being in the spotlight, having fame, having fortune and riches, and being in the spotlight. That is what we associate with glory. For us, glory means winning, not losing. And it certainly means not dying. But the glory of Jesus is centered on the cross, and it is a glory that bleeds. It is a glory that dies for you and for your salvation. And the greatest glory was to do the will of his Father and to lay down his life for you as a sacrifice for the world. You know, we always talk about glory in relationship to Christmas and Easter. But not so much about Good Friday, not so much about Holy Week and the days leading up to Easter, but Jesus' greatest glory shines in the darkness of death for you, and it's by his death that he lifts you out from up underneath your sin and your shame and carries you unto himself. Fellow redeemed, when Adam sinned in the garden, he took us down with him into the grave, you inherited Adam's sin. It's called original sin. But in the glorious death of our Savior Jesus, he does or undoes what Adam did and lifts us up from death to life. 
your sins are forgiven. You have been justified. You have been united with him in a death like his, and you certainly will be reunited with him in a resurrection like his. Die. Die with Jesus and rise with Christ as he draws you unto himself. You have been crucified with Christ. His glorious death is your glorious death. You no longer live, but it is Christ who lives in you. And in Jesus, you are a single grain of wheat, a single seed, dead to yourself, but alive and bearing fruit in him. And you have been buried in the fertile soil of Jesus' death so that you too might rise and you too might bear the good fruit of our Savior. May this Holy Week be for you absolutely glorious. May God grant that unto us all. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, may it guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus and to life everlasting. Amen. We rise for the prayer of the church. Uh, we have a number of prayer requests. I'll just list them briefly. Um, uh, for Julie Miller, who is having surgery this coming Wednesday, uh, prayers of healing for Hertha Ferguson, Wayne Dean, Larry Dewar, uh, for Debbie Sutton's mom, Marion Smith, um, for Diane Prevost, um, also for the family of Rosalie Kursky as they mourn her death. Um, for Warren Kent, who used to be a member here who had heart surgery this past week. Um, for healing for Cindy McKidner and also for Morgan Baker. And then for Cindy Lewis, um, who is waiting a consultation and has 12 bulging discs. And then finally for healing for Ralph Rabel. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Lord God, your son humbled himself to the point of death, even death upon a cross. Fix our faith upon his death for our salvation. Enrich the proclamation of the gospel. Enliven our hearts to live out this faith until Christ comes again in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Uphold this world in order. Preserve the church and the preaching of your word against all enemies. Bless our homes that parents and children may serve one another faithfully and grow in instruction and faith until life's end. Give health and wisdom to all who serve in public office, that their authority may be exercised for the benefit of all people. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of hosts, your Son came to deliver his people from all evil. Take away the fear of all who suffer in this world. Especially, we remember this day, Julie, Hertha, Wayne, Larry, Marion, Diane, the family of Rosalie, Warren, Cindy, Morgan, Cindy, Ralph, and all those we name in our hearts. As they await the fullness of their salvation, fix their eyes upon their crucified and risen Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son, not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week, and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, show us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna in the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who step by step obediently went to the cross to overcome sin and death and give salvation to all who believe. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and say... <laughs>
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This too do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
of you, Jesus, is in the one true faith, now unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. We remain standing for our closing hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna.
You may be seated. Uh, back page of the announcements has things happening this week. Um, being that it is Holy Week, you will see the uh, worship opportunities. Um, Holy Thursday, uh, we will have communion with the stripping of the altar at 6 o'clock. Um, we are continuing our series that we were doing during the midweek, uh, which is Be Gracious to Me, as we look at Psalm 41. Um, and so if you've been here for some of that, all of that, or none of that, We'd still love for you to join us. Uh, you'll be able to pick up kind of where we've been uh, going throughout this Lenten journey. Uh, Good Friday, we will have worship um, at 6 o'clock as well um, as we celebrate the passion and death of our Lord. For Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday, there are two opportunities for worship. There is a 7 a.m. sunrise service. Um, that service is completely different than the 930 service. Um, so if you're an early riser and you like to get up, come join us uh, as we greet the sun, uh, S-U-N and S-O-N, um, as he rises from the dead. Um, or you can join us at our normal worship service time of 9.30. There will be a breakfast between 8 and 9 o'clock um, in the gym uh, on that Sunday. And following the late service, there is an Easter egg hunt um, for um, people that are... Little to big to even adults that are children at heart. Um, so we would love for you to join us for some or all of the Holy Week events uh, coming up this week. Speaking of the Easter egg hunt, uh, the ladies, uh, women's ministry and Dorcas Society um, need help stuffing eggs uh, this coming Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Now I looked... Uh, I think it was last, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, I counted, and we have 46 bags of candy. There's like 6,000 pieces of candy there or something like that. Um, so we have a lot of candy to stuff into eggs. I don't know how many eggs we have. Uh, but So thank you very much for, for your support of, of our children. Um, and uh, if you can help us on Wednesday, we would certainly appreciate that as well. Um, there's some other information in here about uh, sign-up sheet for Easter breakfast and signing up for um, Bible studies and other things that are coming up. Please take note of those things as well. Uh, please join us for a time of coffee and refreshment, and then we will have a Bible class uh, shortly after 11 o'clock. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. <laughs>